Hello, it's Lady T. Welcome, welcome. Come on in, everyone, to another great episode of Royal Black and Elite, where we meet to talk about black excellence, different people in the black community, and I just try to come from a different perspective. We often hear about the uh, side that's subjugated, but there's also another side, an elite side, business people and uh, people who are inventors, and I try to share all that here on my channel. But then we go into other conversations about history, and one of the histories that has been most hidden in the black community is the history of secret societies. Now, people have always been intrigued by the thought of it. You know, the secret societies, a group of wealthy elites who pull the strings of the world from behind a curtain of anonymity. These secret societies have been around since the 13th century. And we, as a community and as a society, have only begun to find out about these people working behind the shadows is because members have come out and wrote books and some of their information has started to spill out over the years. But even some of their membership roles, we don't know who they are since the 1980s. And so they are indeed still secret. But I thought you'd find it interesting to know that there is also a black secret society. Now, most secret societies that kind of everybody knows the who is, beginning with the Skull and Bones. Um, the name, the official name of that organization is Phi Beta Kappa. And very powerful people are a part of the Skull and Bones. And they say the organization we're gonna talk about today in the black community is formed after the Skull and Bones. And we've also heard of the Freemasons, very powerful people involved with the Freemasons. And as you see here, um, it's been around a long time and even new people are a part of the Freemasons. And then what about the all mysterious Illuminati, right? We've heard of the Illuminati, um, you know, in movies and in books, articles um, on YouTube and, and what they do behind the scenes. I mean, all of this ritualistic things, um, sacrificing things. So, uh, doing seances. And so secret societies by its nature has a very mysterious and actually nefarious uh, underpinning and has always been a part of our society and the decisions that are made from a secret place that no one ever knew about. In the black community, this organization is called the Boule or Sigma Pi Phi Fraternity. It was founded on May 15th, 1904 by these six medical professionals. And it was really founded not to uplift the black community, but to create a conclave, if you will, for rich, wealthy, and usually mixed race African-Americans who wanted a society of all themselves because Skull and Bones, which was a white organization, would not let them in. Now, it's not like fraternities like we know, the Divine Nine, you know, AKAs and Kappas and Alphas. I pledged AKA in college, so it's a lot different because I didn't know anything about the Boule and nobody told us about the Boule when we first got started. So this organization is way more elusive. It's way more powerful. Um, and it's filled with people that make the decisions for the entire world. Or so that's what uh, people say who have done research for many, many years on these organizations. Now, before we understand really these organizations, we need to understand the social construct of what was going on during the late 1800s, early 1900s in the black social class. So there were the descendants of slaves. Everybody was the descendants of slaves, but uh, the ones who were still living in the slave experience, who had to work at the plantations even after slavery was over, and they became sharecroppers. This was more of the the um, the bottom of the social economic level for Black people. Then there was a contingent of Black people who uh, were getting work in in factories, and so this would be considered kind of like the middle class Black people, and they were very proud and beautiful. Uh, beautiful families during this time. And then there was a contingent of mixed race people. Now, for a long, for since the beginning of slavery, uh, white slave masters had violated uh, their, their slaves and had children with them. So there was a contingent of, of black people who actually looked white. And even some even tried to pass 
for white. Some of them, you couldn't even tell they were black. And that's really where the wealth in the black community began. The children of these slaveholders uh, were educated. They would, they created really an enclave for them to live in and to um, kind of gather all the wealth and concentrate the wealth within their own community. And they became the doctors and the lawyers and the politicians of the time. And that's where we see the establishment of the boule because they couldn't be a part of Skull and Bones. They organized among themselves uh, within the Talented Tenth. The Talented Tenth was a concept by W.E. Du Bois, William Edward, um, to you know put all the resources into these Talented Tenth. And these Talented Tenth would lead the other 90%. Uh, Steve Coakley, who was a revolutionary, a black revolutionary, said uh, that they deputized 10% of the population to ensure that the 90% never catch on. So what, you know, I don't know if that's true or not. What I will say is that uh, for the social changes that have been made as far as integration, the financial uh, changes have been nil, none, devastating to the black community. And the black wealth has continued to remain concentrated within that 10%. So the person who spearheaded um, the founding of the Boule was Henry McKee Mitten. He was a pharmacist. Um, he actually owned the first pharmacy uh, in Philadelphia as a black man. He was also the superintendent of Mercy Hospital of Philadelphia for 24 years. Fun fact, his wife, Edith, this is her, she was the sister of James Wormley, and he was the owner of the first black hotel in Chicago. Click here to see his video. Algernon B. Jackson, he was another physician, and he actually led up the Negro Health Initiative, a movement nationwide. Eugene T. Henson, also another medical doctor. Edward Clarence Joseph Turpin Howard was an MD, and he was one of the first black people to graduate from the, the medical school at Harvard. And then we have Richard J. Warwick, and he was a dentist. And these are the six men who made up the founding board of the Boule. Now, members of the Boule are called Archons, and their main goal is to socialize with each other and create power and keep that power within that small community. And they've done a really wonderful job at it because most of the people in the 19th and 20th century who has led Black people have been members of the Boule. And the reason we know this is because they have a magazine that goes to each HBCUs called the Boule Journal. Martin Luther King was a Boule member. In the 60s and 70s, the Boule began to really let people know who they were and to uh, let people know who the members were because they were getting older um, and they were getting more divided economically and culturally from the black people they say they were trying to serve. Although again, there are other people who have different notions on that. So let's look at some prominent Boule members. And we'll start with W.E.D. Boys. And unlike regular fraternities, to be a member of the Boule, you have already had to graduate from college. So it's not on college campuses. You also have to be financially wealthy. You have to be business astute and, and your business doing well and socially recognized. So uh, you have to be asked to join the Boule. You cannot uh, ask the Boule to put you in as a, as, as a member. So here are uh, W.E. Du Bois, uh, the first Black Commerce Secretary, Ron Brown, uh, and former Atlanta Mayor, Andrew Jackson, and we have many, many more. One of the Boulé members you may recall is Vernon Jordan. He helped President Clinton. So this um, reinforces that the Boulé are powerful people, and the people who belong to that group are powerful. They also have a foundation where they give out scholarships in black communities. So this is the secret society, the boule in the black community. Had you ever heard of the boule? These men are usually in politics, high level education, and they set the black agenda on a national level. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope it enlightened you and to really kind of what's going on in the world and what you see uh, sometimes is orchestrated by people that you may never meet, never know, 
but you see them all the time. And they have these secret allegiances uh, to individuals who may or may not have your best interest in mind. So I just thought that really interesting. Our next study is going to be on the Prince Hall Freemasons. I thought that would be very interesting to find out where the black Freemasons came from in our country. So be sure to click in on the video when you see it or read more about it in Royal Black in Elite. As always, I want to thank you for joining me, for liking, sharing, and subscribing. I love reading your comments. It's because of you. A new side of blackness is getting out. The royal side.